Well, welcome to Cambridge and another episode of How Is All Kids. Um, I thought in this episode I'd do a few updates on orchids that I've photographed in the previous videos. Um, the first one that I wanted to show you is this one. This is Bifrenaria harrisoniana alba. And I filmed this last year and it's been my most popular orchid video so far. And at the time when I showed it, it was full of flowers, a great big plant that I could hardly lift. And I pointed out then that it was getting to such a stage that it was too big for me and what to do about it. The problem with Bifinaria harrisoniana is it's not an orchid that really likes being messed around with and divided. Anyway, I did decide that I just had to divide it because when it actually came to it, it was just such a mass of um, shoots and stems and pseudo bulbs and roots that had completely sort of integrated themselves with the old cedar basket that I'd made for it many years before. The, the only way that I could actually get into it was to use the technique that you would use in the garden, which is two forks um, back to back when you're dividing herbaceous perennials. And I'll just show you a photograph of my wife uh, Fiona dividing one of her ornamental grasses on the ground. So I did the same. I'm sorry I didn't film it at the time, but I just put it on the lawn, put two forks in where it seemed to do the less damage, and then just gently sort of teased it apart. And I ended up getting four um, really large divisions out of it. Two of my friends had asked me for um, pieces to propagate many years ago and so they got two pieces and then I potted up two of my own. This is a new basket that I made. It's exactly the same size as the original and even then I had trouble um, wedging this quite large division in it. Um, and then there was another slightly smaller division um, and I put it in a slightly smaller basket. But as you can see um, they took an awful setback and if I'd had a really large greenhouse um, it would have been much better from the plant's point of view to just left it to carry on developing naturally and if need be sort of just rest it in a bigger basket um, to save it falling apart. Anyway, um, last year um, it was a bit slow off the mark to start with and you can see that the pseudo bulbs are slightly higgledy piggledy from having to sort of get it in this basket. But there are lots of new shoots this year. One, two, three, four that I can count quite easily. Um, it started making, well, last year it started making lots of new root growth in this very open uh, bark compost. They've come through to the, there's another new one with a nice new root tip here. Um, but as you can see, um, this year it only rewarded me with um, two flowers. Uh, this one came out um, a little while ago and this one is now going over. Still have that lovely ripe um, pear scent. Um, so they're sulking a bit at the moment. Uh, but there we are. It had to be done. And from now on I anticipate that they'll make lots of growth this year and then from next year onwards I'll start getting lots of flowers again each spring. This is my Angraecum didii which I filmed last year in July when it was full of flowers. It has a beautiful um, night scented, uh, really rich, uh, beautiful perfume. So it's a really lovely species to grow. I've had this for a long time. Um, it started off as a single growth in a little pot. Um, and I planted it in one of my uh, Western Red Cedar sort of boxes that I made, sort of halfway house between a basket and a pot. And after a couple of years, it developed side shoots and produced quite a bushy plant. And last year when I filmed it, it was really um, looking really good. But um, after that, last summer here was not a very warm summer, although a lot of parts of the world were um, suffering from droughts and heat waves. We weren't here in Cambridge. And I noticed a little bit of rot, a couple of leaves started falling off. And that's because the inside of the bar of the old pot had become quite sort of, 
it basically just been in there too long and it was beginning to go downhill. So I took it out, trimmed off all the um, old um, dead roots, made a new um, teak basket and put it in that with just with some quite large um, chunks of bark. And it's now beginning to move forward again. You can see there are quite a lot of nice new live roots growing either from the stem or sprouting out down below. And that, of course, that, that's exactly what you want to see. So that's a really good sign. So it's now sort of developing a new, really healthy root system. Um, there are a few flower buds on it. It's not going to give such a good show as last year. What I wanted to point out was that you can't sort of take orchids for granted. And when things do start to go downhill, you really need to work out why they're going downhill and do something quickly. Otherwise, you can actually lose plants. Another one that I want to show you is a cattleya. I'll just go and get it. Now, this is a beautiful little um, miniature cattleya. Cattleya um, love knot has these exquisite, nicely perfumed flowers during the daytime. And I used to have a really big plant of this because I'd had it many years. It had developed and bushed out and formed a really big clump. But last year, at the beginning of the year, I noticed that, in fact, it was during the winter when I have problems in here because things can stay a bit sort of cold and dreary for quite a long time. Some of the new shoots were beginning to sort of wither and looking a bit um, unhappy. Catleys are notorious for developing a sort of rot, um, which can lead to you losing the whole plant. So what I did was, instead of the normal advice, you throw the plant away because it's really serious business. I thought, well, I've had this for years. It's a dear little plant. Um, I'm quite attached to it. I'll take a risk. So I had it out of the um, basket, um, use sterile um, secateurs to gradually prune back and back and back um, through the rhizome until I couldn't see any of the sort of purple staining. And when I'd done that, I was left with about less than half of the original plant, so it was quite tragic really. And I ended up with two quite decent um, divisions, so I thought, well, I'll pot them up and see what happens. And um, in fact, I'm pleased to say that I've ended up with two really quite nice, healthy um, plants that haven't shown any sign of the disease um, since. I've been very careful um, about watering, particularly with the new growth, and not to get any water down into the um, centres. That is almost can be overnight fatal to one of these. So that's a sort of um, recovery story, um, which I'm quite pleased about. Now, in my last video, I included this Dendrobium harveyanum because it had opened a, a few days before filming, and I'd been told and read on the internet that the flowers are very short-lived. Well, this is now four weeks since it first opened, and the flowers are now looking a bit tatty, but only just in the last couple of days. So I would say that the flowers last a good three weeks, which is not exactly short-lived. So I'm really pleased with this. One thing I'm slightly disappointed with, though, is that they are reputed to have a sweet scent. Well, I haven't been able to smell anything at all. However, so on the smelling score, uh, this is less than I was expecting, but on the length of flowering, much better than expected. So overall, I'm really pleased because the fimbriated um, flowers are really beautiful. It's a very elegant species. Now, on the subject of um, sort of general maintenance, one development over the last year that I've been that I've become really enthusiastic about, and that's partly um, thanks to my friend um, Hugh, who's a very keen orchid grower here in Cambridge, and that is moving over to clear plastic pots, which are now really quite widely available. And what you do is you put the plant in a clear plastic pot, and then put the clear plastic pot in a black pot so that otherwise you get lots of algae developing. The reason that I've become really enthusiastic about that is that 
it enables you to see exactly what's going on. So you can tell when it needs watering, you can tell what stage the roots are at, because if, if you haven't got lots of live um, new roots, there's not a lot of point in giving it lots of water and certainly not feeding. So this enables you to keep a very close watch on what's going on underneath, which you wouldn't be able to if it, if it was in a normal pot. As you can see this, since I've had it, um, I got this at the end of last year, and it's made fantastic new root growth. Look, it's really good. It's exactly what you want to see. And I'm just about to pop this on into a much larger um, pot. You can get them in all sorts of different sizes. Whereas this Eranthes grandiflor, which was only potted up a couple of months ago, you can just begin to see the new roots developing. Now I thought I'd just finish up with um, a new development for me, and that is pollinating your own orchids to produce your own seed but, um, from two different species. Now these um, two orchids don't look great at the moment because they've more or less finished flowering. This is Polystachia bella, which has a beautiful um, sweet scent, and this is Polystachia pubescens, which I've both featured in previous videos. This one has completely finished flowering, and this one has been flowering for quite a long time, and the last flower spike is now beginning to go near the end. Anyway, my friend Hugh, who's a keen orchid grower here in Cambridge, has cross-pollinated quite a lot of his orchids. So he showed me recently how to um, pollinate um, orchid flowers, because I wasn't really quite sure. I'd seen it done on some quite large flowers like um, Phalaenopsis, where it's much more obvious these are tiny little flowers in both cases. So I cross-pollinated um, these together and I've now got um, some seed pods developing. And a couple of little seed pods on this one. So hopefully in maybe about six months or more, if the seed pods carry on developing um, properly, and if it produces viable seed at the end of that, I can send it off and in a few years' time, I might have um, a hopefully an interesting surprise to find out what happens when you cross Polystachia pubescens with Polystachia bella. Um, I've never seen that um, cross uh, for sale, so I don't know if anyone's done it before, but um, I'm quite looking forward to finding out. Anyway, so that's about um, all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have, do click the like and subscribe because it helps um, other people to um, be pushed towards my videos by YouTube. And um, hope to see you in the next one.